welcome back to another Thunderous Productions video. I'm the madman behind the mic, Jag Thunder, and this is Minecraft. Welcome back, everybody, to episode two of my brand new series, Build It Better. Uh, the first thing I want to go over, I want to address some of the comments in the comment section of episode one. Uh, one of the things that uh, people had wanted and I have got PMs about was the uh, the seed that I was using. So I'm going to pull that up for you right now, and it's 8675309. And the place where we are building is negative 543.89.82, z-axis negative 286. Um, so, and we're in extreme hills edge, I guess is, that's, that's what the area is called. And what I did is I went back to my, uh, I've got about six or seven different clients, and I've grabbed my 1.25 vanilla client, and I put this seed in, I've tried it two or three times. Uh, and, and this comes up the same every time. You've got to fly a little bit. I think you spawn over there somewhere in the jungle and just basically go up in the air and work your way over to these coordinates. Uh, it's, it's not real hard. It shouldn't take you more than just a couple of minutes to get here. That way you can follow along to what we're doing. And then also, too, if you're using uh, Red Power or the Railcraft mods like I am, this will still be here. Um, it'll just it'll just generate different. You'll probably get uh, some weird stuff over there, maybe a volcano or something. I'm not really sure, but... Uh, I know the, the first part of my world that I created um, using this seed was in uh, Railcraft and Red Power, so you should be just fine. You shouldn't have any problems using this seed. All right, so something else that I want to go over is the, the plan of the layout of the episodes that I have. Um, I'll overlay right now over top of the screen. Uh, basically, uh, the series that's coming up, each episode, what they're going to involve. They're not set in stone. They'll probably overlap each other, and there will be... Uh, you know, some things that you see in this list that will actually be combined into, um, you know, one episode. Uh, so like all things in the beginning, you know, I want to start off, start off basic, work up to the harder things. Um, and that's, that's how I'm approaching this series. Each episode should build off the previous episodes. So as far as like larger builds, you know, that's what we're gunning towards. Um, the centerpiece, if you will. It's going to be based off this town that we started in episode one. Uh, we're going to learn... Um, all the basics of a good design based around putting your skills to use blending objects. So we start with one house and add others and then connect them with paths and bridges along the way and learn how to make one build flow into the other. Um, I, I'm the type of person where I believe a good finished product, it's because of good project planning. Um, so with all that being said, let's go back to my normal world and we'll see where we're at. All right, everyone, so here we are. We're back in our uh, episode one where we started. And as you can see over here, I've done a lot to my house. And if you're kind of following along in your own worlds, I hope you've uh, built some better things on your house. I have gave you guys the seed for this episode. If, uh, if you want to hurry up and download it and then try to catch up to where we're at, uh, the only thing different, like I said, is up, up river where that big mansion of mine is. Uh, I guess when I spawned this world first, that, that snow biome wasn't there. So if you follow that river up there, you're going hit to a, hit a snow biome right where that uh, mansion is sitting. So that'll be the only thing different. Uh, everything down here should be the same. Uh, so I've spawned it two or three times. Uh, so you should be good. But anyways, let's fly over here and let's take a look at what I've done so far. And I've ripped things out quite a few times. As you can see, I've changed the roof. I never stick with the same roof when I first put it on. I don't like it. It's, uh, roofs are a pain in the ass. We'll probably get into those later on when I can get uh, a little bit better design where I can actually teach you how to put these together uh, because they're kind of hard to teach. Uh, a lot of this, like I said before in the first episode, I don't have any plans. I just start putting it together, and that, that's what I have. So this roof will probably change again. Um, and I put a little chimney up there. And then also, too, the biggest thing you've probably noticed is it's got a big deck around it now, and the the pathway that came down here is all changed. And I uh, told you in the other episode that uh, I like to use double slab. That's probably my favorite stone in, in all of Minecraft. And as, as what I've done, and what you can do, too, uh, is take a, a, a third material and splash it up into your build a little bit. As you can see, I put some on the corner posts. That that might change. I don't know. It looks all right. And I've put it around the sides of the house to kind of trim it out, and then also up here. That way, it's picked up some of the color and some of the design that's going to run away from the house and also into the other buildings that you know we plan on putting around the area. 
they can they have more than just wood and cobblestone to work with so the next house we could probably do the whole thing out of uh, double slab and wood and it's going to match because we've already incorporated that into the very first design uh, so let's go down here for a minute and i want to take a look inside and like i was saying before again and i'll probably say that a lot i'm not a big interior designer i'm just not i like to build the buildings uh, sometimes I go in and finish them, sometimes I don't. But as what I did is I moved it back a little bit and I've made it wider too. I went two blocks wider than what I had before. Uh, three blocks wider, I think. And I kind of went with like a, I don't know, a French, French door type thing going out on the patio. And that's what that looks like. And outlined it in fencing, of course. That's really easy to do. As what I'm going to do back here, and I haven't got real far, but I'm going to dig this out into the mountain, and this will be like the kitchen area and maybe uh, another access area to go underneath us to come back out uh, down here. And we'll just kind of walk the fuck down here for a minute. All right. Right here is going to be like a, a, a basement access, and I'll, I'll dig that in, but I put the door there for now. So uh, as you can see, it is off-centered. And, you know, like we was going over in the, upper, in the other episode, uh, to keep everything uniform, uh, you try to keep things on-centered and, and your spacing. Every once in a while, you want to throw the eye off a little bit and give the eye something else to look at that's not quite where it should be. So I put the door a little bit off-center. So that's what we're going to pick up off the beginning of this episode, is um, there are exceptions to the rule. Uh, the majority of this episode, I'm going to try to cover paths. paths. Paths can be a pain in the ass too, and there's a lot of different designs that you can do. Um, as for this one here, I could take this straight down, right down to the Tiki Hut, and it would probably look just fine. But that's not what we're doing here. We want to build it better. So we take a look at the terrain and figure out, well, which way we could take this. Could we take it down here? Is there going to be a dock down here, a future um, uh, marina maybe? Uh, that other house that I talked about over here, I know that's going to be here, but you know where's it going to be? But I'm seeing right here a path going down and coming down to this flat area next to this pond. And then also, too, maybe wrapping around the back side of this and coming down to go into the second part of our, of our uh, town build over here. And then it'll come across here, somewhere up through here. And then maybe... Uh, through the wheat fields and there'll be some windmills up here and I saw that hole on the last video That's that looks cool up there. I don't know what I'm gonna do up there, but um, that's real interesting Let's maybe try to build that way as far as the town goes So anyways, let's start on the path. So let's take a look at those All right as far as paths and bridges and decorations are very important in tying things together and getting around your town uh, the most common paths are straight and very city-like, and that's fine if you're designing a more modern type build and uh, modern city, uh, but this isn't quite what we're going for here. This is more of a you know rural country type look. Uh, the idea is to make your paths useful, but yet create an, ad uh, an atmosphere of actually walking inside the game. Uh, you can use your paths to force um, other people, if you're on a server, to walk past uh, like a central main object in your town or a cool building you just added. As you or another player walks down that path, they're forced to turn in the direction that you made the path, so they have to look right where you intended for them to look. So use this to your advantage as you plan paths and walkways around your town. Alright, so let's learn some interesting ways of building your paths to address the needs of your town. Alright, we're going to dig right in here, and like I said, we're going to go around the side of this hill and the first thing you'll have to do, if, if you're following along on the same seed that I am, is you're probably going to have to clear some of this land back uh, to make room for the turn. And that's probably the hardest thing is with Pasco. Uh, I'm using three wide, and you'll see later on uh, what I've really done to the mansion up there. I've got paths all over the place, and they're looking really badass. Um, so it's what we're going to do. Turning, like I said, is hard. So we're going to go ahead and extend this out three more. And, and prepare for the turn. Uh, some people go straight diagonally, some people use a radius. For right now, I'm gonna go diagonal, uh, just because it is the easiest thing to do, and then right up about there, I need to go straight. So if I look down, I'm gonna have four blocks instead of three. So whenever it moves that way, it's gotta go over one block at a time. And this one doesn't have to be there, but just to address the corner issue, we're gonna throw that one in. So we're gonna start here, and we're going to go one, two, three. So now we have four blocks here. And let's get it back to daytime. 
and then one, two, three, four, and that'll get your path going that way. And you'll have to customize it a little bit because we're making such a sharp turn. Uh, it's probably going to be about right here. Uh, let's take a look at that. All right, it's looking pretty good. It's about five wide, and we're just trying to keep this angle right here about the same. And we're going to build around the side of the hill. And I know this isn't probably the, the easiest way to teach somebody how to make paths. But again, you know, like I told you, uh, this is kind of building through the eyes of Jag and how he looks at things um, and where it's going to go. And as you can see, that looks pretty good. I think we need one there and there and maybe there. So now we have the three wide. It starts to go this way and it starts to wrap around the hill. And we need three wide over here, so we're going to pull this back. Uh, we got two, two, one, two. Uh, we're going to look at the, the spacing here. That looks pretty good. And we're just going to go right through here. And I want to leave the bulk of this hill. And I want to end up coming through right about here. So always, always look ahead to where your path is going to go. And make it three wide because that's what we're going to end up with. And these will probably disappear because that's where the stairs are going to start going down. And then cut back through the hill like that. And now we know we need to go around and up. So I'm kind of looking at this like that. And I'm thinking maybe here. Like I said, a lot of it is just kind of eyeballing it. And it's very hard to teach, teach you exactly how, how to do this. If it was just a, we'll go down here in a minute and I'll lay out just a regular standard uh, path. But I want you guys to kind of see how I do this. Uh, because that's what a lot of you wanted was Jag how do you do this well this is how I do it uh, a lot of it's uh, a lot of guesswork if you've got graph paper um, like I've mentioned that's probably one of the best tools that you can use or there's a an online site where uh, they've got like uh, Minecraft uh, ah, fuck blueprint or something or another you can go there and uh, actually uh, graph out your your designs uh, so that'll work uh, really good if you want to go there. And I'll try to find that link that in the description. And we'll take those out. And we need one more block right about here. And that might have been too much. So anyways, well, that looks pretty good. That's a good start. I'm going to put one more there. And take that out. And put this in right there. There we go. Now we've got a pretty good curve, and now I can see this is too much there. And that looks pretty good. It wraps around the hill. And we're still got three wide here. We could go four. We could probably even go five wide because this is the main path going down. So um, thinking ahead, we can readjust this path. But now we want to take it off this way so we've got room for this the house that we want to put over here. So centered of here, which is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, which is good, is an odd number. So we've got 4 on one side, and right here is your center. So we just kind of throw these blocks down here so I can see where I'm going. And we're going to drop on down again, and we're using the half slabs and a double stone. And you can mix this up like I had mentioned before to give you... A different look if you want to throw some cobblestone in here and you'll see I did that on the the house up the river here in just a minute um, you can put it in like this and then throw your half slab on top so from a top view you've got something that mixes and then later on if you go to a gravel path you already have it incorporated into your path so that you can just go ahead and switch right over to full gravel when you get out in the you know the commoner section or you know back here where you know it's not quite such a richy zone uh, it gives you more flexibility for you're not stuck with the same path design as you're building. Uh, so anyways, that's the start of the path going down this way, and we'll turn it when we get down here. Uh, I'm not going to go ahead and finish that because that's just a, pretty much a straight shot, and then you know we'll build it and turn it this way and maybe take it down to the Tiki Hut this way. And then around the back side, uh, we'd be, uh, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to throw some uh, half slabs down. And I know this episode is a little kind of uh, all over the place, but like I said, paths are, in my opinion, just about as bad as building roofs. They're they're hard to teach. There's no real set design unless you just, you know, go straight diagonal, or if you go 90 degrees on all your turns, which is boring as fuck. And I'm not going to teach you how to be boring as fuck. Uh, you know, I want you to kind of, you know, follow me along and see what I'm seeing, so that in your world. When you go to do this, 
uh, you can be like, okay, well, now I can see where that path can go. And also, too, make sure you blend it in. Make it look like it's actually setting into the terrain. So if you've got to carve out some blocks to bring your path up, go ahead and do that. And we're going to come down here. This is going to kind of more turn into a, uh, a play with series, it looks like. But um, I hope that's okay. I hope everybody's enjoying this so far. And I know I'm babbling. And this is kind of out of my norm of the way that I make videos. Um, but I hope this is okay with everybody. So we're going to build these down. And right about here, I'm seeing a turn that's going to go in front of this waterfall. But I've got to come over two blocks and, and, and make that turn. So I'm going to come across here first because I like that grass right there. And then I'm going to come out around the waterfall because I want to leave that. Okay. And our path, whoops, you sons of a bitch. Our path is still going to be three wide, and then we're going to have to go three wide here. And now I want to go back to three wide. All right, I could just go straight down and come across and then straight down again. But that's boring. I, I want to add some some sense of direction with your eyes to, to move you around and, and keep things interesting. And because we made a turn, I want to go out one more block so that it, it rounds off like this. And that way, if later on I put some kind of a... Let's try wood. If I do something like this... To outline the path in to keep people from falling in the water you've got enough room to get around here and then also two because I did it on one side should probably do it on the other mmm this is probably not gonna I, I will probably change this uh, by the next episode but you can see what I'm trying to do actually that's not bad that's not bad that works and now is what we can do it's, uh, we got three wide here and not really there. But we don't need the fence on this side, but we still want it to reflect the other side. So we'll go ahead and do this. And that way when the people walk by, they can piss in the water. <laughs> oh, whatever. <laughs> um, we're going to bring this across and find out exactly. This is a pretty sharp uh, set of stairs. I may have to come down the other way and around. Because uh, I don't think I can bring that down quick enough. Probably not. And maybe. And I'll fill this the bottom part in once I figure out uh, how deep this has to go. <laughs> I hope you guys are enjoying the fuck out of this. This is a whole new way to for me to teach people how, how to do what I do. Um, it's not really planned out. Usually I've got my tutorials all planned out. and uh, If you watch the Real Craft one that I just put up here a couple days ago, I've... You know, I've got everything all neatly laid out so I can walk around and, and go from one thing to the other. Uh, this one's kind of all over the fucking place. Uh, let's go ahead and build this out here. No, you son of a bitch. All right. And we're almost there. Getting an idea of where this is going to go. I want to get to this bridge. Obviously, that's where the fuck I'm heading. And we can go up. One more, and another set. And I'll show you how to trim this out here as soon as I get down. Uh, as soon as I get down here, and how we're going to tie this in. So I'm going to have to come out about that far. It looks like, and half stone, and half stone again. So now I know that this is not going to work. So I can back this off, and. I can probably bring this out another set. But for now, I'm just going to tear it apart. Rip it down or blow it up or build it better. <laughs> uh, I guess I'll go ahead and make that a, almost a straight shot. It's still, it's still pretty interesting. It still looks good. And we're still using uh, part of the mountain here for the look. All right, now let's, let's trim this out. Um, we're going to do wood. And then everywhere I've got a full block, I want a full block. So that I'm going to do this right here. And I'll show you what it, what it looks like from the inside. Is What I want is a half, a half slab on every step. So that here you have one, and here you'll have one. And then there'll be a full block here. And then when you get to the top, you can kind of cap that off. 
And if you want to continue this around, you can. Uh, let's get back to daytime. Back down the stairs. And, all right, let's go over here. And we're just going to keep trimming this off, working our way down. Uh, we're getting there. No, right there. Until we get back to where we was before. And I think I'm going to need one more here, and then we'll go ahead and turn it like that. All right, and then we'll go back up here. Mm, no. Drop down. Get your eagle on, girl. I'll cap those off. There. All right, now across here, we could put the half steps. And it would still look fine, but somebody can still fall in if they would. <laughs> Just like that. <laughs> but what I'm going to do is I'm going to put full blocks across here. Just like that. And you can still look up here, but it's, it kind of keeps you contained. Or we can use the fence posts. Uh, we could put them in between. Something like this. And we're going to work our way down that way. So let me go ahead and finish this off here. I'm going to leave this open, and we're going to come back, and I'm going to show you how to bridge this in so you can still see the water. So we'll be right back. All right, guys, so we finished the pathway coming down the side of our mountain, and I'm going to duck in here, and I'll show you what I've done. And I've got the half slabs going down just like I wanted, uh, like we were starting, and I've wasted a lot of time coming down the side of this mountain, almost 20 minutes already in this video, but... Uh, hopefully you all don't mind. I went ahead and grabbed some more stone and I filled this in and uh, and, and kind of surrounded that water. Um, that way I didn't have to move the wood in any further and kind of offset what I was trying to do here. And then I just went ahead and finished it down straight and then I ended with uh, a solid block. That way if I want to continue the wood design out another path this way, which probably wouldn't be good because that's a big mountain there unless we put something up in here. Um, I can still go that way and same thing here. I can run the wood and what I was looking at is we're going to go this way and and up through. But we'll come down here in just a second. Um, and then this here I covered the face with wood and I popped a hole in it and kind of made it look like the water runs underneath this somewhere. And I may come back, like I said, again, my designs change as I, as I go. I may fill this back in and come underneath and put rails. Uh, or fence post rather all the way up through here and you know maybe some more water coming out but this kind of gives us the, the general direction and the feel of where we need to go and, and it looks good uh, threw some torches on there so so at night time we've got some uh, you know plenty of lighting uh, and it looks good with the water so that's where we're going with that and then we carried it around or I carried it around rather around this side and earlier I called this gravel I was talking about the gravel pathways tying into other towns I meant to, I meant to say your cobblestone all right like if you change your pathways going into something else uh, you don't want to use just one solid uh, like double slab all the way down the whole thing and then when you get outside of town uh, you want to go to a normal uh, pathway you don't you don't want to try, try to change from double slab straight to cobblestone or straight to gravel so uh, you know as I was saying if you incorporate it to begin with it'll be a lot easier to transition out of that going out of town and then transition coming in so let's uh, go ahead and we're, we're gonna come down here for a minute because I keep saying that I'm gonna come down here and we're actually gonna build a fucking path and we're gonna build a fucking path and it's not gonna be complicated like that is up there it's kind of a bad place to start sorry guys uh, but like, if, we're, if, if we go uh, whoops, let me get my builder on here alright say we've got a three wide path like this and you want to turn it to the right. Uh, the easiest way to do is just go diagonal. And you, we're going to finish right here three wide. This is our turn that we want to make. So you make the inside turn first. Because that's going to be the tightest part of your dimension. And now you know this is going to have to go out before it comes in. And that's going to go probably to... So if you got four every time you go over, like I, like we was doing up here, so you got four, and then four, and then four, and I'll probably need that one. We'll look at it in just a second. 
start off with one more than what your path is to begin with just to get an idea and as you can see I don't have four here I've only got two so I know that this is gonna be here and so is that and now we can look at it and see that there's some missing and we can go here here and that keeps this perfectly diagonal across here and that's where this connects and this is perfectly diagonal across here or you could have made it a radius. A radius is a little more complicated to do and I don't really want to get into those right now uh, because we're still on the basics. Um, as we get further in our town up, upstream and here, um, you know, we'll start doing some more radius and uh, corners and, and things of that nature. Now you can just trim out on the outside of your path with a double slab or you can just leave it flat. Uh, I've got a thing with wanting to trim them out. I don't know why and make them five wide. I just I think they look better. Um, it gives you more versatility as far as putting uh, lamp posts and stuff like that along your trail. Uh, it, it would look better than just you know stabbing in the dirt right there and uh, building a uh, some sort of a light uh, with uh, maybe glowstone or something. Uh, and and this is a pretty pretty well used design that everybody uses for lights. Uh, I guess I try not to, to use this if I have to, just because it is so common. Um, but I'll show you what I've used upstream just as soon as I get done here. Uh, and then again, uh, if, if you incorporated uh, your cobblestone uh, from like above and you had steps here coming down, and actually if I'd built this out of cobblestone, as we got out of town and this goes into... Uh, just you know the regular woods or whatever and this was cobblestone we'll just imagine the whole thing was just out of cobblestone we can just go ahead and carry that out three wide and you don't even have to worry about finishing trim it out you can stop it right there and it just runs out and kind of naturally uh, or if you know you got one big block here at the end you can put a light on the end of it and drop it down maybe one more uh, half slab and then that kind of just lets it angle out real nice and it trims off trims everything off real smooth. So that's how you kind of turn your paths uh, from you know a 90 degree turn without going out straight and then coming right back in. Uh, so anyways, uh, we're gonna fly upstream and I, I want you to see some of the other stuff that I've got going up here. All right, I'm gonna fly in here at nighttime because it, it actually looks a lot better at nighttime. It looks good during the day too, but um, I want you to see how I've got it lit up. And there's my paths that I have so far. And this area here I cleared down. I thought I was going to put a house here and then run it off. And But like I said, as I build, things will change. Things will change for you too. And that's good. That means that your mind is you know, constantly working and is doing what it should be when you're designing. Uh, I put a bridge down here and I'm obviously not going to get to bridges in this episode. Uh, but this this is a nice little bridge that crosses the river. I was going to originally cross it right here, uh, but it caused some problems going out at an angle. And then same thing here, I was going to bring it straight across and just turn it with one path. Uh, but I decided to uh, make a path going out this way, and that's going to head down to the lower part of the town here. And there's that snow biome I was telling you about, and you can see it. Uh, let me throw it back on daytime real quick. You can see this, this is where the world, whoops, this is where the world wasn't generated when I, uh, when I threw in red power or something. And you see the, the very decisive line that runs through here um, that separates uh, this this whole area. So that's in, in your seed that you get. This will probably be a snow biome, and, and I'm sorry about that. But uh, unless, you know, by the time we get done with this world, I'll have a download and you can have this one here. But uh, also, too, here's the mansion. And I, I cleared off the, the big bulk of this hill right here and Joe Blow Tree Cutter, I think we called him on the first episode. Um, he invested in some fencing uh, before anybody gets in town and robs his shit. And as you can see, again, the spacing is, is uh, very good for the eye. Uh, there's a couple areas where you're obviously not going to be able to get it uh, to wrap it around the hill here. And then I've got the main path already started. And I'm, now I'm starting to think I might want to go down into this area instead of over here because there's a lot of a lot of terraforming and shit that I that I'm gonna have to do if I go over this way so I may hold off and not go down there um, and then I've got another main gate over here and I, uh, I changed everything to cobble or yeah the cobblestone like we, I was teaching you down here to give it two different looks 
and down here is the dock I was originally gonna put it right here and I decided to do this instead this is where you can launch your boats off from and right there we're gonna cut a tunnel through uh, either the next episode or the one after that we're gonna trim this out real nice and uh, I'm gonna teach you how to make uh, archways and actually bore through that thing and make it look really nice uh, so that's already set up for there and should let's go up here you can see I went up and turned at the same time using uh, the same thing that I've been teaching four 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 and then four and then I just kind of fudged it in a little bit and this is my light design that I'm using it's just uh, uh, glowstone covered with uh, the trap doors and this is gonna go through here and I'll probably have to take some of this tree out and go through here and that'll head out into the snow biome, which I, I'm not real crazy about snow biome, so I'm kind of a little pissed off about that one, but no big deal. And then here I've got it split again, one going that way and then this one going around. And this is where the the main path kind of tapers out. And I've got just where it just almost a waterfall effect. It just kind of falls off the main path and, and it just dies right here. But you can you can look through here and see where that path wants to go where I'm going to have to do the least amount of work. So either here and then uh, go around that way or maybe even go through here. Um, so there again, I'm just trying to teach you to look for the you know ways that almost tell you that, okay, this this will take a path or this will take a building or, you know, whatever. You just be more observant of what Minecraft has uh, gave you to work with instead of just leveling everything and then trying to put it back when you're done. Uh, so anyhow... That's what all that looks like. And like I said, we're not going to get to the bridges on this episode because I've just I've gone into this one way too far, and it's kind of turned into a play with series. And uh, I hope that's okay. I hope you guys are still picking up uh, what I'm laying down. <laughs> There's an old reference, uh, but you're getting you're getting out of this what I I hope and what I intend for you to get um, to to look at your builds a little bit better, to use the landscape, your location. Uh, scaling and, and all that to create something a lot more appealing than the dirt house that we first started in. All right, well, I guess that's it for episode two, guys. Remember to rate, comment, subscribe, follow me on Twitter, and if it looks like shit, tear it down, blow it up, or just build it better, and we'll catch you on the next one. Later.